When running Apache Spark applications, you eventually need to know what is happening with your jobs. You can get started easily with monitoring tools that Databricks offers by default. In this video, I'll walk you through the default monitoring options with Azure Databricks, which are very similar to what's offered in open source Apache Spark. I'll focus on how I use it in my day to day as a data engineer. Check out my other videos in this series to learn other ways of monitoring Apache Spark, like monitoring streaming queries or using Azure Log Analytics. Let's dive in. Starting inside the Azure Databricks workspace, I've gone to the Compute section, selected a cluster, and I can go to the Spark UI for that cluster. The main place that Spark developers are probably used to looking at these days is the SQL tab, where it's going to show my application as one or more queries. I don't have anything running yet, so let's go and kick off that notebook so we can see some information start to show up here. So I kicked off this simple notebook, which will read data from a CSV file and write it to a Parquet file. If I refresh my SQL tab, I'll see that there is a running query, and that running query is the application I've just kicked off from the notebook. So it's only been running for a little bit of time, 16 seconds. I can click on the job ID to jump to the jobs page where that ID exists. Uh, jobs and stages and task is really the way Spark optimizes your code. It's the way it breaks down your work so it can run concurrently on a cluster of machines. So when I want to view the details about what's going on, I usually start by clicking on the description just to kind of get a feel for if the actual execution lines up with sort of what I thought would happen. I'm not saying I spend a lot of time here, but it can be useful to go and look at the details that come with uh, the read from CSV shows that there's a scan happening. It's reading 12 files with this amount of data. So it's a little bit of data in this job. It'll actually probably finish pretty quick. Whole stage cogen, I can see the projection if I want to, which is going to show me the columns that I'm that I'm naming in this in this query. And then finally, the execute insert Hadoop FS is really where I write to distributed storage. So in this case, I have an ADLS location, an Azure Data Lake storage location, and I can see how I'm partitioning it, uh, what my path is, and the final names that I'm using if I hover over this. I actually, when I am on this page, I spend a little more time looking at the details, the written physical plan. So I'm a little more used to the text description. And really, the thing I'm usually looking for are things like how many exchanges are happening, and uh, maybe what types of joins are being done. In this case, there's no joins, there's no shuffling, which is what's called an exchange when you're looking at the plan. So this one's pretty straightforward. I don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about this. Back on the SQL tab, this is still running. It's at two and a half minutes now. I can go click on that job ID like I mentioned. Let's take a look at what we have here. So on the job, uh, if there were other jobs running, I would see more of them. And by the way, if you're not using Spark SQL, if you're using RDDs directly, you would need to jump straight to the jobs or stages tab. That SQL pane will not have information if you're not using Spark SQL. So there's a few things I can look at here. The input and output's a pretty good overview. The number of tasks is telling me how much it's breaking down this data. And I usually click on the description to go into the, some details from this view. So that's going to show me one or more stages that are related to this job. And it'll have some summary metrics. Garbage collection time can be interesting if you start to have issues. Uh, on a good case, you don't really need to worry about it too much because everything's fine. I can actually go down and look at the details for each task and even try and look at standard out and standard error for those. Uh, again, this isn't where I spend a lot of my time, but it is good to know it's here, especially once things start to go wrong. You have a way to get to DAG visualization, which is a little bit different view of it. You might be more used to seeing this view. You can also add a few extra metrics if you're having some. Uh, JVM memory issues, you can start to look at some of that information by adding additional metrics. Another tab I use when I'm trying to see, usually at a broader view of what's going on with my cluster, is the executors tab. And often I'm not spending a lot of time here either. I'm really looking for issues. And so if you see this dead row here, if I start to see that I have dead executors, that's usually telling me something's going wrong, something's not working smoothly. I don't see that a lot in Databricks, but it certainly can happen. If I look at my task time versus GC time, I'm just kind of keeping an eye out that GC time is much smaller than my task time. And if I want to get down and understand a little more about how memory is being used, I could go and do the heap histogram. So this is usually if I'm doing like stateful streaming or something more advanced, I might want to see 
how what's taking up most of my memory because at that point it's probably the state store that's pretty memory hungry so if i see issues here if i see things start to color yellow or red because something's going wrong that's always a sign i need to do something otherwise i'm just kind of looking that you know storage memory looks healthy some of these things look about how i expect a lot of failed tasks in this column is something else i'm looking out for by the way so those are the main things I'm looking at. And so like I said, the SQL tab is a good overview and a good place to drill into what you care about. By coming back to the SQL tab, we can see that my job has finished. So three and a half minutes, it's done. And I didn't see any issues as I looked around. Now, to get into what I'm doing as I'm actually developing, making changes and trying to see what happens, I'll often spend time in the driver logs. So the driver logs are standard out, standard error, and log4j output. So log4j output is pretty verbose by default. You can change that uh, via knit scripts or other ways, but it's pretty verbose. And what I like to do with that is really pipe it to, in Azure, I pipe it to Azure Log Analytics and another environment, probably something like Elasticsearch where I can query and filter really easily and keep that history a long time. I'm not showing you that in this video. In this video, I want you to know that you can scroll through and see the latest log4j output and see what's going on right now or just recently. Standard error is thankfully empty here because nothing went wrong, but if I'm having trouble writing my files, if I'm getting other errors that get raised, that will show up in standard error. And unfortunately, I do spend a lot of time looking there to see what errors just happened, why my job failed. In standard out, it uh, has some information. It has garbage collection logging turned on, which I try to ignore unless something's not working well. It has a lot of other details that I can skim through. And sometimes I'm actually doing prints or other types of logging, which go to standard output. Notice that you can download these files from your cluster. And that's pretty handy if you really need to search through and figure out what's happening on your cluster. So there's the overview of driver logs in the UI default view. Like I said, there's other ways to port that data to a search tool, keep it a little bit longer. And I'll show you that in future videos because I think that's really handy. Another key thing for Spark monitoring, and this I usually look at pretty high level uh, unless I have a special uh, problem I'm solving, is the Ganglia metrics. And so there's Spark metrics that are turned on by default in Databricks. You can do some configuration of what exactly goes to Ganglia UI. And it also has historical snapshots if you want to look back at what did this metrics view look like in the past. So. This is probably a little uh, interesting if it's your first time seeing it, but there's a few things we can see. We can see that CPU spiked up and then went back down as my job completed. That's not anything too concerning as long as it's not always at you know 80 or above. I can see that network activity happened, which is good because I was just writing data. And I can also kind of tell if you didn't notice by the CPU usage and the network that nothing's really happening anymore on the cluster. Now. The green color here basically showing me that for the metric I've selected, I've got a little bit of activity on, on this node. This node's getting hit a little bit harder than the others is typically what I'm seeing. And I can click and drill into the details for that node. The main time I find use in this chart down here is if the driver is getting a lot of activity and I should probably increase the number of cores so I can handle more load. The other thing to know is that I can search for metrics and choose different metrics here. So if I search for memory, I can grab some information about uh, JVM memory and see if anything stands out to me worth noting. So this JVM heat memory would show me how much memory the driver process was using. And you can explore and find different metrics that, that are meaningful to you. So that's our overview of the metrics tab. It's not gonna be available with every Spark setup, especially if you install open source Spark on your own, but there's many different ways you can get metrics ported to tools that you want to use. Uh, but Databricks comes with Ganglia, which can be really useful, especially if you don't have a need to spend the extra time setting up log analytics and, and other things that usually come with more uh, time and more production workloads. Back on my SQL view, I can see there's no active query. So I'm going to kick off another notebook that does include a join. And we can see just a little bit of difference in how that more complex example looks. So this one's going to load the lookup table then do a join and then write to Delta Lake. So we might see it break it into more queries than the first one. So I can see two queries for the main part of my job where I'm doing the join. Uh, this one actually has a few different jobs running. A few of them have completed. Let's take a closer look. 
So in the details of this core piece of my job, I have this step up here where I scan Parquet and do a whole stage cogen and do some filtering, which is really to get my lookup data, which is a Parquet file, a Delta file, I believe. And then I do a broadcast exchange, which is how it makes that data available for the joins. And then if I look in here, I can actually see uh, that it's a broadcast hash join, which um, as you're building batch jobs, especially if you're having things run slower than you think they should, understanding what type of join Spark might do in the plans and making sure you know what's being used is a, a really good thing to pick up as you get further along in your Spark journey. Again, I have the physical plan down here and uh, the details I might need are all available to me if I want to read through them or like I said, you could grab that and search it in another tool. So back on the SQL tab, I can see all my queries have completed. The longest one took 4.3 minutes. And this gives me a bit of a feel of what actually happened, how long things took. And then I can go to the job stages, executors and metrics tabs to try and get a better feel about all the other aspects of my processing. Don't forget that driver logs are very helpful, especially when things start to go wrong. So those are the basics of monitoring with Apache Spark using kind of the built-in UI tools. Check out the other videos in this series. And if you wanna keep up to date on Spark training and other data engineering practices I share about, subscribe to this channel. See you next time.